Hey, Viking fans, I cannot believe what happened this Friday today. Yes, sir. What the heck went down? <laughs> Let's talk about it next in three, two, one. <laughs> Gather around, Skull Brothers and Sisters. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can find me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at Skull World. Make sure you leave a comment. Tell me what you thought about what Quasi Adolfa Mensa, GM of the Minnesota Vikings, did today. Let me know in the comments. They'll enter you to win an autographed jersey of Justin Jefferson. Heck yeah. When I hit 3,000 subscribers, any comment below, tell me what you thought of this trade that happened today what the heck we had i don't know what i was doing at the time i it i'm i'm a brain fog now i couldn't believe what happened but let's let's lead up to this he tries to uh extend kirk cousins a year ago he tries uh tries to get him for one year plan a plan b well let's extend him give him some money into the second year nope atlanta offers him four with money into the third year he it went from maybe sixty million guarantee from us to hundred million guarantee for them. That's just some, probably an estimate. That was plan. That was plan B. Plan C. And both both things was go draft a quarterback. Both A and B were also go back draft a quarterback. Now we're in C. Kirk Cousins gone. Now plan C. They go and get Sam Darnold, who I wasn't excited about. I thought it was a show me move. Then he comes out with a press conference yesterday and says, Sam Darnold's not a bridge. I'm like, what the heck? Well, I know he's bluffing. Like, he's trying to build value in Sam Darnold to make it look like we're not needing to draft a quarterback necessarily. And he even said as much. If that's not there, it's not there, whatever. Okay, I get it. He's bluffing. But he's holding a pair of, pair of twos in Sam Darnold in high states poker. I wasn't coming out of that press conference. They weren't looking enthused. The people interviewing, asking the questions weren't enthused. I definitely wasn't enthused. So the difference between me yesterday, not enthused, and other people that were like, oh, this is a good plan. This is great. Well, now, Crazy Adolfo Mensa makes the trade. He calls him up, calls him up and says, hey, I need to make a trade. He may have had it in the works. I might be dramatizing this a little bit, but he went out and did it. Um, he, he built up a lot of trust in me that he can get this done. I, I imagine three years ago, he wasn't thinking he was going to have to trade a bun, trade up with the Texans into the first round when he first took his job three years from now. But here we are. He was able to adapt. He goes up and trades, makes a trade. The Vikings get the 23rd overall pick and the 232nd overall pick, which is seventh rounder. Houston gets 42, 188 this year, and in 2025, the second round pick. So that gives us the 11th pick and the 23rd pick, and then we don't have another draft pick until the fourth round. So no two, no three. So Vikings, take the day off. Take the day off. You don't need to go work unless you trade back up into the third round. Who knows? Who knows what will happen? But I was, I don't care about that now because what that did was it probably for sure saved our 2026 first round pick. But for the trade, it might have looked like we would give up a 24th, a 25th, and 26th. But the other teams, Denver and the Raiders. I think the Raiders are 12 and Denver's 13. They have first round picks. They could go do the same thing. So now we have something they don't. We have a draft pick two in the first round that they don't have. We got the marbles now. We are holding all the all the marbles. Minnesota Vikings are in the driver's seat to trade up. In the first round, who do we got? We got the Cardinals at three. 
or Cardinals at four. We got the Patriots at three. <clears throat> now, I don't know why they wouldn't go get a quarterback. I don't know. Why pass up an opportunity to get one of these quarterbacks if you need one? I have no idea. Unless they're like a Bonex or a Penix, maybe they want to, maybe they'll be like, okay, we'll get one of these guys and we'll have all these extra picks. That's a, that's a plan. That is a plan. And I won't, I won't complain about it if they did it. Now, the Giants, they gave all this money to Danny Dimes. They, they, they still need, they still, I mean, their jobs are in jeopardy in New York. They have a short, short leashes in New York. They give out short leases in New York. So we're talking about New York just sitting there, potentially just take one of the four quarterbacks, one of the top four quarterbacks. Why not do it? Well, is that a win now move? No, it's not. But it might reset your clock. Who knows? But you're the one who gave him. You you guys are the ones that gave Danny Dimes $40 million. So now you're doubling up on quarterbacks? Danny Dimes was your answer, right? And now a year later, he's not. So the Giants, they have a little bit of a driver's seat at six. Now, number five, that is the, the Chargers, who just gave away Keenan Allen. <laughs> They're in the market for a receiver now. Do they feel like they could um, drop down 11, still get their receiver? Who knows? Let's find out. I am sure Quasi is on the phone Constantly checking in on these potential trade partners anywhere from one to 10. I don't doubt it. Now, the guys I had listed as, you know, I, I have Jaden Daniels, number one. I have Caleb Williams, number two. I have uh, Drake May, number three. I have J.J. McCarthy, number four, as a tiebreaker type situation because I don't think he's ready yet. He just He's got a lot of the intangibles. Rick Spielman said today on NFL radio that he's a leader, he is not a game manager, and he is a more mobile Kirk Cousins type that will work well in the Kevin O'Connell offense. Honestly, you don't if you don't like Kirk Cousins, fine. But hell, if that type of production, but you throw mobility into it. That was the things you got. Uh, people a lot of, uh, complained a lot about Kirk Cousins. So get Kirk Cousins with mobility. Boom, nice quarterback. I think I do. So he thinks he's also a mid-round first-round pick. But you got to pay more to get a quarterback you like in the first round. <laughs> so he thinks he's more around fifteen. When we might have to take him at at four or five. So we'll see there. But this trade. Gives me the hope that we may even save our 2025 first round pick. What do you guys think in the comments? Tell me in the comments. Do you think we'll have to give up <clears throat> this year's 11, this year's 23, and this year's and then next year's uh, number one pick? Do you think we would still have to do that? And why do the Texans make this trade? It don't make sense, right? You don't think it makes sense, but what actually happens? They probably think we're going to be bad. We don't have a quarterback, or we're going to play with a rookie, or we're going to play with Sam Darnold, that we may end up, you know, our our pick might end up being a top second-round pick. So what do they do? They go down to second. They get the 42nd pick. Now, next year, who knows? Maybe they get an extra, that extra second-round pick is back up there at the top of the top of the second round. So that makes sense. That second round pick is a lot of value. Now, picks this year are more valuable than picks next year. So that's why it was so important for Quasi to go up and get it to say, here is the two first round picks. You know what they're worth. You don't know what those other picks are going to be worth in two, three years. Take our picks. Take our first rounders. Yeah, build your team right now, a year early. So Quasi Dalfamensa has a selling point that he did not have yesterday. 100% left that, I, I left that pre press, watching that press conference. And I was like, dude, this isn't, this isn't good. I doesn't instill confidence in me. Now he has, he's come back. He's pulled the trigger on a great trade. 
he's going to move up and get that draft pick. If he doesn't, holy hell will break loose in the Vikings community. Just imagine this. We go get an edge rusher, and we take Michael Penix or Bo Nix at 23. How crazy that day would be. But I think Kwesi's going to move up. I think he likes I like I think he likes the guys up there. I think he's gonna pull the trigger. And we got our hopefully our future franchise quarterback. We have never picked a guy in the top 10 of any draft in the history of the Vikings. 2024, it'll be the first time. Skull Vikes. Cue the music. <laughs>